Roberto Serrano, the man who leaked the date and time of the PlayStation 5 reveal, is at it again, this time with the price and release date of the PlayStation 5. Also, a popular game that was revealed at the PlayStation event is getting a delay, plus Ghost of Tsushima gets a surprise reveal edition. All this and much, much more in today's saltiest PlayStation news report. Let's get into it. What's up, my fellow gamers? It's Saltiest Gaming. We're back with another PlayStation News Report. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5. Happy Wednesday, Salt Nation. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Playing some good games. I had fun last night playing some Fall Guys. I finally got my first victory in that game, but I digress. Lots of great news to get into in this edition of the Saltiest PlayStation News Report. So let's not lollygag shall we? The PlayStation 5 controller battery could be 50% longer than the PlayStation 4, the DualShock 4, according to new leak. New images have surfaced of hands-on on the PlayStation controller. This came from Galaxy Rain 666, and he talked about the battery capacity being 1,560, much more than the PlayStation 4's controller, the DualShock 4. It's about 50% larger than the PlayStation 4's DualShock 4 controller. According to reports, that will equate to about three to four hours of battery life. I personally love the fact that they have internal batteries and I don't have to mess with switching up batteries like I did with the Xbox controller, but we shall see. Next up, we have news of Crisis Remastered coming to the PlayStation 4. While nothing has been said from the developer, a new video from PlayStation Access, which you can see in the description below, detailed new titles coming to the PlayStation 4 this week and surprise, Crisis Remastered is said to be coming this Friday. It's even the thumbnail and the background for the video. It's been kind of a strange road for Crisis Remastered. It wasn't originally revealed officially, but some leaks came out that were not well received. So the developer decided to go back to the drawing board, except for the Switch version, which released on time last month. And I actually heard very good things from one of my buddies on Twitter, Next Gen Player. I'll put his information in the description as well. He got a review code for the Crisis Remaster on the Switch, and he had nothing but good things to say. So be on the lookout for a Crisis Remaster come to the PlayStation 4. I know there's a lot of fans of that franchise. In other PlayStation news, PlayStation 5 has lost Arcane's death loop to a lengthy delay. Unfortunately, this is one of the titles that was revealed at the PlayStation 5 event. I personally didn't really connect with this title when I saw it. It's made by Bethesda and Arcane Studios, and it was announced today that death loop is going to be delayed to quarter two of 2021. It's due to the ambition for death loop to deliver a signature Arcane game, and they felt like they could do that with its original release date. One of the main reasons for the delay is the pandemic, and this isn't the first game to get a delay. Halo Infinite was delayed, and I'm sure we're going to get more before the end of the year. Some people are worrying about Cyberpunk 2077, and a lot of people are worried about the beginning of next generation in general, that all these delays are going to catch up to the next gen consoles, and there's just not going to be much to play. But I personally am not worried about the amount of games for the end of the generation and the beginning of next. I'm super excited for the games that are currently still slated for the PlayStation 5's launch, specifically Miles Morales. I'm excited for Demon Souls and Godfall. There's plenty of games to play. There's almost too much to play as an adult, so this is not going to be an issue for myself. What do you guys think? Were you guys looking forward to Deathloop? Let me know in the comments section. Surprise, surprise, I put a video out talking about Ghost of Tsushima. The developer was talking about the potential of a multiplayer being added, and I was kind of skeptical if it could potentially be added to this time. Title, but the funny thing is, is I dropped my video and guess what was announced on Twitter? Developer Sucker Punch Productions announced that Ghost of Tsushima Legends, a new co-op mode that is set to be free to download for folks, is going to be released later this year in the fall. No exact date has been announced, but two new modes sees two to four players assume the role of Samurai, Hunter, Ronin, or Assassin to take on special co-op missions. The trailer, when I saw it, blew me away. I cannot wait to take part in a a 
special co-op session with my friends. The article states that there are going to be co-op story missions, wave-based survival missions, and even a four-player raid that is set to be added to Legends after launch. So it looks like they are in full-fledged support mode for this game to make sure it stays alive and well. And I'm super on board with this because this is one of my favorite titles of this entire generation. It sits right below God of War. Sucker Punch hit this game right out the park, and I cannot wait to see what's going to happen with this game post-launch to get that PlayStation 5 update, the 4K 60 enhancements. Man, this game is just going to continue to provide hours and hours of fun. I still haven't got the Platinum, but I'm working on it. And when I do get that Platinum, I'll let you guys know about it. It's going to be, I think, my fifth Platinum or fourth or something like that. I didn't chase Gamer Score when I was on Xbox. For some reason, the Platinum Chase is where it's at, man. I can't get enough of it. In other non-surprising news, the PlayStation 5 hardware reveal trailer passed 30 million views on the internet. The PlayStation 5 rocketed ahead of the Xbox Series X in terms of views on their announcement videos. The PlayStation 5 hardware reveal trailer debuted in the PlayStation 5 showcase on July 11th, and now we're sitting in August, and it's hit over 30 million views on YouTube, despite only being up for two months. When you compare that to the Xbox Series X hardware reveal trailer, that one's only been watched for about 15 million times. The excitement level is palpable for the PlayStation fans. We cannot get enough information when it comes to this console. And you better believe the internet's going to melt down once that reveal of the price and the pre-order date goes live. Speaking of which, Roberto Serrano, like I teased in the intro, he's been very active on Twitter and I haven't been shy when calling him out and stating that I'm not too sure about his stance or situation as a quote unquote insider. He did get the PlayStation 5 reveal event, the date right and the time. So I said I'd give him more chances, but it's tough to figure out who's legit and who's not on the internet, right? A lot of these dudes become insiders without getting many things right. And majority of the times they are wrong. The guy seems like a nice individual, but honestly, I don't know his background. I don't claim to know who he is. I know that one of my friends, Marlin Gaming Nation, reps with this guy and, and uses a lot of his sources and stuff like that. I think he's going to be on his show. So there's a lot of people that seem to think he's credible, but as with anything, you need to take all this information with a grain of salt. He was putting some news and information out there regarding the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S dates. He believes the S is going to come out on the 5th of November 2020 at $399 and the Series X will come out on the 6th of November at $499. He posted this about the PlayStation 5. He thinks it's going to be dropping on November 13th, 2020 at $500 for the console with the disc drive and the digital version will come out at $399. He gives himself an out though that any of these prices and dates can change without moment's notice. So it is what it is. I've talked about the Series X. There's a leak on the warranty information on the box for the Xbox Series S and it was around that time. So you could kind of connect the dots together. It doesn't take a genius to kind of guess for that. As far as the PlayStation date, that would land about a week from when the Xbox Series X drops on a Friday. It's exactly a week later. So it's on a Friday. Again, it wouldn't take a genius to guess, hey, this is a good date to guess for the PlayStation 5. And these are the prices. I've talked about the prices for these consoles. I even brought up a new story of some leaks for the Series X potentially being $600. I don't know. I'm going to stick with my guns here. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I still think the Series X is going to be coming in at 600 bucks. I think that the PlayStation 5 will come in at 500. The digital version will be 400 and the Series X will be 400 as well. We shall see though. I mean, it is what it is. You, you got to take these speculations and rumors for what they are. It is not official word, but it's just around the corner. It's a matter of time. I mean, it's already August 19th. There's only so many days left, so many months left, right? September, October, November, less than three months. They have to get this information out. What are they going to stealth drop these consoles with no announcements of the price? It's getting crazy, but trust me, it's going to happen. We're going to get the official words from these companies themselves. But what do you guys think of this date for the PlayStation 5, November 13th, 2020, and the prices of $500 for the standard console and $400 for the digital version? Are you guys team digital like myself? I'm digital all the way, baby. Team digital, let me know in the comment section. This is why I do my channel. I love talking to you guys. I try to hit you guys up as much as possible. If you're new to the channel, I, I appreciate you guys checking it out, man. We've been having some crazy growth lately. Fantastic, fantastic growth on the channel. And I want to thank you guys individually.
Lee. I couldn't do this without you. I love video games and I hope you guys can hear that in my voice when I talk to you about this. When I do podcasts, it's something I'm passionate about and I love it with all my heart. So thank you. Thank you again. If you're new, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon for future notifications. Stay safe, play video games, not flops. And as always, stay salty, my friends. Thank you.